Delighted to be joined by Desi Bulkair. Uh, welcome and thanks for coming. Oh, thanks. Thanks in, sure. for coming as far as Oliver O'Connell's house and coming along for the chat. Um, you're a man that has great history. You, you're, 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 when, you, when you talk, you bring back the past. And, and what I think I notice most from listening to you is that you notice some fantastic people that other people mightn't have noticed. Yeah, you did, you did. Yes, and, and you, you, you refer to people that might be left behind by other people. Well, you see, uh, on, uh, they were unusual, and uh, people would just pass them, give a look, but uh, they had a personality and a way about them. Uh, I drink a lot of water in my time, God forgive me, when I was young, but I spent a lot of time up in Kilinena and a pub called Sam Dyles, <coughs> but there was characters that come in that uh, people say, oh no, but... I enjoyed them. They were unusual. Yes. The dress, the way they spoke, the talk, everything. And and maybe that's what how life has changed. There was a little bit of there was a great respect for the unusual 
when Harrison, you see for when, when, character. When, when you see, just to give you an idea, we'd be playing down in, in Rogers and Scarlet. Michael Rogers and his father, Mickey, it was a lovely pub and lovely people. Uh, couldn't meet nicer. But I was bringing a little character with him. Uh, he was supposed to be my bodyguard, but he thought he was anyway. If he was the size of you, he said something, but he wasn't. Oh, but uh, you see, he was a character and he'd stand in the centre of the floor and everyone would be looking at him. So you don't get that today, do you know? No. You see, he was different. He knew he was different and he would. would uh, you'd have to, to look at him like. Uh, when, I'm not saying we were laughing at him, but you see, you'd have to smile, you know. He was. That's what I loved about, yeah. uh, about as of somebody that's come here and 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 uh, I'm here about forty years in Kilkenny. Yeah. But I noticed, I, I I noticed years ago that there'd be a certain person in the parish. Yeah. That would make people smile, but when it came to their, their turn to perform, it mightn't have been the best thing or another, but to be the biggest roar. And they go home the happiest. Well, you see, this is it. Well, you see, <coughs> as I said, most people come in, they shave and maybe have clean shirt and tall and tie. I'm not saying these characters hadn't, but they stood out that be different. They could have a pair of Wellington's on. Mm -hmm. They just could, just were, uh, uh, as we had a more said, with a gimp of him. Yeah. Do you know? So they stood out in the crowd and people looked, whereas if, if uh, you'd have maybe 10 people, and they'd all have collars and suits and there'd be uh, 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 ties and shorts and all that. But these lads, uh, they stood out that bit, you know. Yeah. And uh, of course, I've been the devil that I was. I enjoyed them. Yes. And uh, not that I have any great education myself, but uh, when they started pronouncing words like uh, this small lad, he should be going round with me. He'd never say this, uh, you're so and so, uh, you don't appreciate me, but you don't proclaim me. I already made up himself. I won't. Well, <laughs> but you knew what it meant. I did, but you see, he meant to appreciate what the name of the complex was properly like, hey, you know. <coughs> well, you're, you're, you're part of history yourself uh, when, when, when it comes to the, the, yeah. the, the music of Clare. Tell us about the night Tony McMahon came to record you in Peter's Well. Tell us about the lead up to it and how it came about. And well, of course, did you know the effect it was going to have on people that recording that night? I did, did and I, well, I did and I didn't, you see, but uh, just to tell all of Michael and Joe and Oliver and, and yourself on and this Damien. chap here, David, Damien, Damien, Damien. Uh, uh, of course, you see, Joe Cooley came back from America and there was great talk. Uh, he, his wife was from Kilinena, so um, he was visiting Sam Dyles and Kenny's and the imports up there, and of course, when the word got around that this musician, you see, he played different. He played very beautiful, like, and great strength, and and, and uh, still very sweet, and he was an unusual person, you see. And uh, he was a master genius at what he was doing, but of course, he was a very, very sick man at that time. What age of man was he? Sorry. He was only, was at that time, 47, that he died in 49. Jeez. But he came back anyway, and... Uh, uh, then he went back again and he promised he'd come back and we just accidentally met up. I was up that country this night and I met him and uh, the, uh, introduced me and when I was walking down towards him uh, and someone said, you should know him now. So he said, Angela and Jack, you could see the resemblance of my parents. But uh, I had known him before that, but I was only eight or nine years of age, he's come to the house. Why are you at this stage? Uh, what was I? What was it? 28, 31 or long yeah. But anyway, to make a long story short, uh, he went, he came back again then and Tony McMahon said to us that he would try and get him recorded. So he, they were all arranged and Catalo Shannon came down and all arrangements were made at Luke Kelly's and got. And I had to go out for him. And he was very, very sick man and a lot of pain. And he came in, and the next thing was anyway at the door. He just stood when he saw the crowd. I'm not going to do any recording, he said. So uh, it was no good to say to him, do it, because if he said no, that was it. And RT and all were there at this stage? They were all there, yeah. So Tony McMahon was in an awful way over at Great God. He said, after bringing uh, all this equipment and Cathal O'Shannon and all, he said, Daisy, he said, bring me home. I want to go to bed. It was. Um, Maybe what time would it be? Six, seven o'clock in the evening time. Uh, no, no, it was sorry, it was earlier in the day. But anyway, once he said he was gone, that was it. So I said to Tony McMahon, God rest his soul now. I said, 
leave it with me. We'll see what we can do. So they postponed everything and and even arranged to come to uh, La Havre St. Pete's as well uh, that evening or that night. And um, again, he got up and he shaved and as I said, he was, was a lot of pain. And he said, Daisy he said, I'm not going to do it. So I didn't persuade him. No, no one could get any good of him, only me, because I brought him everywhere with him, with me, and no, he died to come, but uh, anyway, there was only one condition that he done it. Caroline, my daughter, she's in America now. She was only three years at the time. <coughs> and he was very fond of Caroline. And I said, Joe, I say, um, to be nice, I said, for Caroline to see you when she's uh, grown up and maybe you do it. And he looked down at the ground. Come on, then, he said, we'll do it. So we went down to laughs and that's how that recording was done. But anyone that watches the film, they can see the sweat spilling off him and his neck got blissed and act like he had a big problem. Died short, shortly after short. Did it feel like on the night that history was being made? Well, do you see, it was, it was all new and it was excitement and wondering how it would go. And uh, they danced to sit and there was a crowd there, of course, and uh, was shouting and hurrying and everything. And, uh, it could be done better, I suppose, but it was just a thing like a flash and out of the blue. I don't think it could have been done better. I think I think the the the, 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 the crowd. And well, the worst of it was, uh, uh, lads, was that he 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 played, but that was not what he could do. Right. The best play that I ever heard him doing, uh, uh, what do you call, um, Francie, Francie. Uh, what do you call the bite that was the recording plays the 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 Francie Holland. Oh yeah. Francie Holland Nest is there was a role, is it? That, no, but he's fine. Father and Francis Holland, yeah. There was a, a concert in, in Tona and uh, the Francie Holland asked me who to bring Joe, he said. Mm -hmm. So we played in Fame, it is a trouble, but that time you'd have to get out of playing at half past ten. So we hit away and we went up and stayed for the Lord's Heavens Almighty, they brought the bloody place down. It was, the great, it was the best play I ever had been done, and everyone said that, but unfortunately, it wasn't regarded, you see. I know. So that's the way. Well, and then, then, if you were in a pub, if he came in here tonight now, and if he was in good form and started to play, that music was completely different. And when he played in favour, is in trouble than what he'd done for the recording. When he was relaxed, and relaxed, and as he said to me, sure, Daisy said, when you're paid, it is no good playing. It was a lot nicer when you couldn't pay it. He was saying, but you see, when the cameras was on him and all that, but it was when he was relaxed off. Yeah. Different. Different. But, um, uh, my father, of course, played the fiddle, and uh, a lot of people talk about him, but you see, we didn't hear him playing uh, in his area because, first of all, he was over 40 years when he got married. Mm -hmm. and then he had to build a house and he was a farmer and a lot of heavy work on the land reclaiming land and everything and there was no EC grants or all these things that time and uh, there was four people in the house uh, my grandfather and my grandmother and my uncle wasn't well and my granddad and then there were seven young old cows with the result with milk and cows and creameries and all that he left the fiddle down and between debts and everything uh, people didn't play that time when somebody died but uh, then, uh, the odd time at Christmas time, John Reid, God rest his own, he was a lovely man. He'd come out to the house and he'd be at my father there to be an hour, going on for an hour to get him to play. But it was lovely, no, maybe I shouldn't say that about my dad, but it was lovely when he did get the fiddle, you could see, yeah. even that I was nearly too young to take any notice. But then when I did begin to notice music and come into my twenties, he had gone off playing. But, uh, uh, of course, uh, <coughs> there was a Patrick Divney. My father taught him to play. He died young too, and he used to come to the house. He was a great, great fiddle player. There was Jack Shocknessy. Uh, there was a Pet McMahon. She was down. He taught that girl to play. Then, of course, at that time, Paddy Kenny would come on the radio and different style, beautiful musician like. Yes. <coughs> what he could do, a man that was up on the top of Maharabon, Unbelievable. Uh, Peter Hayes, a different type of a player again. Jonah Crehan above, again, of course, was an unusual 
fit and play. Paddy Kelly and Cree. Yes. Well, there was a Martin Woods in 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 uh, Whitegate, and uh, was it Martin, grand field player? And then there was another lovely field player around the town of Minnison when I used to play the flute when I was younger. I used to play with him that time, but of course he'd be one of the older crowd, but he didn't get that promise. But he was a lovely player. It was John Joe Cullinan. Mm. Lovely player, mm-hmm. lovely fiddle player, lovely style, lovely player. Uh, <coughs> um, again, as I said, the Kilfin all crowd, Tom Hagerty, he came back from Eric and, and, and Pete Lynch, they were lads that they just. And you were always drawn to the box yourself to play with? Well, <coughs> I suppose when I started to play in the banjo, like, you know, which was mostly flute, I used to play when mm-hmm. I was younger, and my father didn't want me to play the banjo, he didn't, he didn't like it. And, he used to be at me to keep playing the flute, but of course they didn't pay much heat to him. Who was the first banjo player you had playing properly? The music you liked? Danny Tracy. Danny Tracy played, the, Danny played the, uh, Kiltarm the Kiltarmer Kelly Band. Is that right? And at that time, and Jimmy Ward. Jimmy, yeah. And then, of course, uh, uh, Barney McKinney came along the scene yeah. in the 60s of the Dublin, and he, he uh, while there are great, great, great banjo players that had put me in the shade out there today playing, but uh, he got an unusual, very sweet tone of the banjo. Oh, sure, he was lovely. Do you know, an yeah. unusual tone, in, as well as that he was a lovely character. He was, yeah. Lovely. Oh, now we can't forget, holy God, wait a minute. Uh, I was at a flag hall, Johnny Galvin and uh, Seamus Spock were holding this after dying. And now I forgot that because that's very important. Mickey Dunn, his uncles, we used to go to the hurling matches in Innes, Brendan, my brother and myself. And... Uh, the match would be going on, but the two duns that travel along in front of the crowd and they'd be playing away. And we were so mad to hear this banjo, this fiddle, especially the banjo. Mm-hmm. And to the dimple, he played it. Oh, he could do it. I don't know. He had a, a tremolo, I don't know. Tremolo. But anyway, they'd move along in the crowd and we'd follow him all the way around. So that was the first banjo yeah. playing I heard. And uh, I went to a all. I don't know, was it in Castle Island? I, God knows, I can't remember unless you know Oliver. And the Duns were in it. And uh, they went, uh, went into Bob and I went over and we had drinks and all that. And they were, they were gentlemen actually, lovely fellas. But uh, the, the, uh, uh, I remember the five string, but to hear the crowd on the Sunday, just at the mass, match which that, it was unusual, it was very beautiful. Yes. Very beautiful. Maggie Valley, of course, again, with her songs and her banjo playing and the way that she played it. Was remarkable again, like. Would you see a song? Huh? And what about the moon behind the hill? Oh, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oliver. What? Do you do the moon behind the hill with me? Yeah. That's a show that you hear Johnny Keane play. Huh? That's a tune I used to hear Johnny Keane play. Yeah. 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 I once last night the rising moon upon the farm. Land. Till memories came <coughs> like flowers in June of home and fatherland. I dreamt I was a child once more beside the red grill when first I saw. In days of yore, the moon behind the hill. Surely it brought me back a vision grand, that purple by her dreams. It's yours for loves, it's happy times, as bright as morning beams he brought me back my own sweet nor the gas land the mill until my eyes could see no more the moon Brought me back a mother's love until in accents wild 
I pray her from her home above to get a lonely child. He plucked me one across the waves to live in memory still. And it brought me back my cattle's grave, the moon behind the hill. Sure, I watched last night the rising moon upon a foreign strand, till memories came like flowers in June. Home and fatherland. It brought me back my own sweet nor the castle and the mill until my eyes could see no more the moon. The man that uh, composed that, he was in jail and Waterford, and he was looking out through the bars, and he saw the moon rising, and he composed that song, the poor fellow, and he jailed in Waterford. Is he can't, I think. So that's it. Lovely. Now, go on. And, uh, of course, there was one thing, I for, well, of course, flute players, no, we didn't talk about them at all. But uh, will we leave that out for another time? No, we'll talk about them. Well, of course, Michael Preston came to the house when I was a child. He played with the Jolly yeah. Kelly Band. Okay. And his father, Mick Preston. Mick Preston was from Sligo. And uh, by all accounts, I don't know the family might be listening to this, no. But uh, anyway, whatever happened in Sligo, anyway, he lost his job with the railway crowd. So they sent him on as a uh, uh, gatekeeper to Gushin. And a uh, great float player, a Sligo float player. But my father was passing one day uh, with a horse and car going onto the land and uh, the men that were working on the railway they know my dad and they saluted him oh you jacked the road ran parallel to the railway anyway this Dennis Cullen he was a brother of John Joss and he was working in the railway he just by chance he said to Mick Preston do you see that him no he said uh, I do this is Mick Preston that's Jack Mulcair, now to see. He said the leader of the Ockham Slopes and the man that played on the Ockham Slopes. Jeez, he pelted the shovel and he ran. And hey, hey, he was calling back my father and he out over the wall. And great chat anyway. So my father invited him up to the house. So he came up and Michael was very young then. So Michael used to come up and they came regular then. So we took nights at the house. That's the only nice music we'd have when Michael Preston, he was young then. Uh, he'd be, I suppose, maybe 14, 15, I'd be maybe 7 and 8, maybe less mm. that time. And uh, his father, Mick, and Patrick Dimney and Jack Chalkin said they were 11, so we'd have great little nights with him. And John Reed had come out then. And Mick Malone was in Cliché. Mick was in the <coughs> Mick didn't start playing the fiddle till very late in life. And, but when he played with someone, it was lovely listening to him. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's the way. And uh, different times, sure. Different people, and the world was different. And-